Hey, you're listening to the Intentional Mind Podcast, and I'm your host, Ange Barnard. On this episode, we're going to be talking about being more intentional with your money. I once heard someone say that if you want to know what someone values the most, take a look at their bank account. See how they're spending their money, because that shows you what they value the most. And I would say, maybe, maybe for those that are really intentional with how they spend their money, that may show you what they value most by taking a look at their bank account. But I think for many of us, it's hard for us to be intentional with our money because we're not clear on the kind of lifestyle that we want to have. We're not clear on our version of success when it comes to our finances or our life in general, right? So how can you be intentional with how you spend your money if you're not clear on the kind of person you want to be as it relates to your finances and how you want to live your life, right? Because in order for you to be intentional, we need to look and see is like, do my actions or the way I'm using my resources like money, line up with who I want to be? Is it in alignment, right? And if it is, that means we're being intentional. But how can we know if it's in alignment if we don't know who we really want to be? We don't have a clear vision, right? That is why I created the Clarify Your Vision course. It's meant for people that want to be more intentional in their life in general, in all areas of their life who want to get clear on how they want to live their life so in their version of success so that they can actually start taking action and being the person that they want to be. Because I believe if you don't get clear on what it is that you want to create, you won't create it, right? So there's people that intentionally design their life and there's people that are just drifting in life. And the reality is if you're drifting in life and just, you know, you're probably going to drift somewhere that you wouldn't choose to go. But if you're intentional about it, right, then you can be intentional about how you use your resources, like your time, your money, your energy. So if you feel like you need clarity around your goals, around your version of success, you want to start looking at being, you want to start being a person that is intentional about how you live your life, And again, you need that clarity, you want a clear vision, then sign up to be on the list that tells you when the Clarify Your Vision program launches so that you can be a part of that group and that you get the bonuses as well. Now, if you opt in with the the link, it doesn't mean that you're officially signed up. It just means that you'll be the first to know and you have access to these bonuses and you're the first to know, right? Part of that group. Okay, so the link is bit.ly forward slash CYV first to know. If you need to hear or see that again, you can always go to the details section of this podcast episode and that tells you um, the link there. So the details section is basically if you click on this episode and you want to know what it's about um, in the description, that link is there. All right, so back to talking about being more intentional with your money. So an area where I spend a good chunk of my money, and I think a lot of people spend a good chunk of their money, is on food. On food for themselves or the significant other or their family, it's, it's quite an expense over time, right? And it's something we can all relate to. We all need food to live. We're all spending money on food. So I wanted to take a look at that area first, and I'm going to give you some tips on how I am intentional with how I spend my money as it relates to food. And another reason why I wanted to pick food is because food is fuel. And if you're fueling yourself with crap or you're not being intentional about it, you're not gonna have the kind of energy that you need. And you're not gonna feel good in your body and feel confident to go about, you know, pursuing your other goals in your life. So it's all relative. So it's a good place to start. So we're going to talk about my tips on being intentional with food and spending money on food. And then we're going to move on to some more tips around just being um, intentional in general with how you spend your money as it relates to buying things, maybe for your home or just shopping in general. Okay. All right, so to be more intentional with how you're spending your money on food, I first recommend that you get a vision for how you want to eat this week, 
What does that look like? So does it look like you going out to eat a certain amount of days during the week? Like what's ideal for you? And then you're eating at home the other days. And if you need help figuring out the answer to this question, it will help you if you look at your schedule that's coming up. And you know, if you have kids, you might have to plan around what's happening in their lives or a significant other, right? So look in ahead and see, like sometimes on my calendar, I'll have a day where I'm going out to eat with my friends and that's already in the calendar. So I'm gonna make note of that before I even go and get groceries. And I'm gonna make note of that, like if I decided I was gonna eat at home for five days this week, ideally I'd like to eat at home five days out of the week and the other two I can have dinner somewhere else. Let's say I just set that kind of vision for myself. Well, then maybe one of those days is gonna be devoted to when I'm going out with friends, right? So another thing that I've done to help me be more intentional about this is I set certain days where we eat certain things. And that's super helpful for me when I go grocery shopping. So here's an example. On Friday, it's Pizza Friday. So we eat pizza on Fridays. And I'm not someone that is like, I stick to this schedule completely and this is how it always is because I allow life to happen, right? And I'm not gonna cause stress over myself and make myself miserable over this, but I'm still gonna be intentional. Like I always say, I'm intentional, but I'm unattached. So some days it might look like, well, Thursday, we really feel like eating pizza. So instead of waiting until Friday, then I'll just move my, my stuff around. Like whatever I was planning on having on Thursday, I'll switch that to Friday. And there's like flexibility in that. And I'm also not wasting things that I bought. So I always keep that in mind. Another thing that we do now is Taco Tuesday. And I switch the kinds of tacos that we have. The different protein sources in them. I'll add different taco ingredients just to keep this changing like throughout, like from week to week and just keep it kind of interesting. We often always have salmon every week and usually it's on Wednesday that we have salmon and I just like to keep that consistent and my my husband likes it and it works out well for us because we like those foods. So if you feel like you can do that and it makes sense because maybe if you think about your appetite or you know your your family's like what they like then maybe you can add some consistency in there and that'll help you out with shopping as well. So First and foremost, take a look at what's happening in the week because every week kind of differs, right? And then start planning around that, that, that stuff and then create some other rules for yourself and how you, you um, are with your food and what you plan to eat. And keep that consistency if you can. And then remember, you're intentional, but you're unattached, right? Okay, um, don't leave it up to how you feel that day with what you're gonna eat. Don't do that. Intentional people don't wait to see how they feel about things. They're not the people that are like, yeah, I'm going to see if I feel like running in the morning. I'm going to see what I feel like eating that day. That's not how they do things because they're intentional. They're always thinking about who they want to be and their actions line up with who they want to be. Another reason you don't want to just wait to see how you feel is A lot of times, let's say at dinner, if you're waiting to see how you feel like what you want to eat for dinner, um, a lot of times your willpower is like gone at that point in time. You've made so many decisions throughout the day. You don't even want to think about food. That's the last thing that you want to think about is like cooking food or what you're going to eat. And maybe you go back and forth with your significant other is like you decide. No, you decide. And My husband and I used to do that, right? I mean, it was just exhausting to both of us to even think about it. And then we would make poor decisions because we would just pick what was convenient. And convenience, I once heard someone say this, is a crutch. Convenience is a crutch. A lot of time what is convenient isn't the best thing for you, right? So if if you set a plan ahead of time or you're intentional about this or you have some set options for you to choose from, it just makes it so much easier on you because you're thinking about who you want to be and you're not reacting to life in the moment based on how you want to feel. Because let's be real, if, if a lot of us just did things when we felt like doing it, we would not be moving forward in a lot of areas in our life. We would have a lot of regrets because I can tell you straight up, I don't always feel like eating really healthy. I don't always feel like getting up and working out or getting up early. In fact, most of the time I I don't feel like doing that. But I do those things because of who I want to be. It's all like, as James Clear would say, a vote for who I want to be. And I'm always thinking about her. 
like my future self and how I can set her up for success and still enjoy the moment. Yeah, still enjoy the moment. But I believe that you're going to enjoy the moment more if you are intentional about it and also practice this concept of I'm intentional, but I'm not attached. I'm not going to allow this me writing down exactly what I want. And let's say something happened and I couldn't, let's say you plan to make a certain thing for dinner and you're running so late from a bunch of activities and you just don't really have the time to make that thing. You're not going to cause yourself a bunch of stress over it because you're like, it's okay. I can move this over to another day. So I'm not wasting this food, right? And I still feel good about what I'm doing because I was still intentional because there's a lot of people who waste so much money on groceries where they buy a bunch of food and they don't eat it. So they end up just going out and they throw a bunch of food away. And that's one thing that I can say I'm really proud of is that we all use all of our food. And, And another reason why we do this is because I really value, I guess, getting the mo- the best use out of things. I don't like wasting stuff, especially like fresh items. Like I just, I feel like that's irresponsible and not a good use of the things that, that I have or that I've been given. And this is because of my faith, but I believe that God is always like watching me and seeing like how I take care of things, you know, and in the planet and things like that. So I want to be like good stewards of like my finances. I don't know. This is a little rant, but I always think about that. So this is why I don't like to just like waste stuff. So in order for me not to waste something, I have to be intentional. I have to plan. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of things wasted, right? So again, the first step really is for you to set an intention, get a vision of what you want your week to be like as it relates to what you are eating. How do you want to eat this week? Get a clear vision of that, but take a look at how the week is going to go. Use that data to help you come up with a clear vision. And then also think about health-wise. All right, so again, look at the calendar ahead for sure. The second thing is to look at what you do have. Take a look at your current groceries. Look at, you know, what's in the cupboards because before you're going to go get groceries, you want to see what you already have. And if your stuff is a hot mess in those cupboards and you can't see what it is you have, I recommend you take some time to organize stuff. Take some inventory of what you do have because the old me used to not be able to see the items I had, like certain certain boxes of pasta or like canned goods. I didn't know what I had, different sauces. So what I did was I just kept buying more of it because I thought I was out of it. And I wasted so much money on that and I had so much extra stuff and it was taking up more space. It was clutter. It would frustrate me when I was like seeing all of it, right? So what I'm saying is, that you wanna make sure that you can see everything that you have so that you can take an inventory of it, right? So look at what you have and then you just make a note of that and then this will give you ideas too of possible meals that you wanna plan, right? Um, So maybe then write down your plan. So this is us moving on to step three is to make a food plan for based on what you do have, what you wanna eat, what's happening in the week, all of that. Another thing to think about is how much money that you actually want to spend on food. Um, And sometimes you might not even know what makes sense, um, but start with a number and just see if you can stick to that number. Or you can be like me, this is a little more painful, but going back and looking at what the trend has been. What have you been spending money on? Like how much money have you been spending on food? And then get an idea of like, hmm, do I want to keep going in that direction? Do I want to bring it down? Sometimes that's a good place to start to see what's an appropriate budget number for you. So an example for me and Ian is that we kind of, we pretty much spend like 20 bucks a day is what we say we can pretty much spend on food. So when we think about the month as a whole, it could be like $600. And this includes us going out to eat and our groceries. And we could definitely trim this number down. Very easily we could. The reason I don't is because I really value buying things that are really healthy. And a lot of times that can be a little more pricey and I'm not willing to sacrifice that 
for me personally. It's not worth it to me. So this is why I'm like, this seems to work out great for us. And we don't always spend that much money. It just depends on what's happening in the month. But generally speaking, I have a number to go by. So when I go and look at my finances, if I'm significantly over it, I'm like, what happened? Like, okay, we need to back some things up, you know? And it just gives me a good idea of like where I'm at. So you want to have something you can measure it up against. So um, that third tip was make a food plan for yourself, right? And this is where it's helpful for you to like, what I like to do is I have just a plain little um, calendar and it, I even do this on scrap paper where I write Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Or yeah, I write the whole week is what I'm trying to say out. And then I just put um, every idea I have for dinner. So like automatically on Friday, it'll say pizza, right? And on Tuesday, it'll say tacos. And then all I have to think about is the rest of the week. It's pretty easy because one of those days, if I want, we can go out to eat. Or then I start looking Wednesdays, we often have salmon. I put that in there. I like to just really plan out um, the, the dinners. And I don't worry about the breakfast or lunch and all that because we tend to have the same things. Like Ian all, often has smoothies in the morning and uh, breakfast sandwiches that I make him. So I always buy the stuff for those. I always buy the Dave's killer bread is what he likes. So I buy that um, and I buy like the cheese and the eggs and all the other stuff I put on his sandwich, avocado. I buy all that stuff every week and the eggs right? So it's a given that's already on the grocery list. I already have a grocery list that has all the things I buy on there often. So I always just go back to the grocery list and I change it up based on what's on my plan. So um, that's the second or that's the fourth tip. So we're moving on to that tip. We're going to recap all of these. Don't worry. So um, this is where you have your list and I recommend you have a list in your phone that has like check marks in it. There's a bunch of apps that you can get that, you know, just for a list. I have, I, I do mine in um, Notion and I have a whole checklist and it, and it, you can just go through and check it off. And I, and I separate it, everything based on category and mine's line up with like my, the grocery store and how it's set up. So I always like to vision myself going to the grocery store And like, what's the first aisle that I see? Oh, it's these kinds of items. Like it's, you know, dairy, let's say. And then I'll write down all of those things. And then I'll think of like the the canned good aisle or um, the vegetables and fruit aisle. Like that's how it's all separated. And you can do this any way that feels right to you. But it's cool if you have a list to start with because we do tend to buy the same things at the grocery store very often. So this is nice because if you have that list, you can pull this list out as you're looking to see what you do have. And then I have check marks there and I just check it off if we already have it. Um, let's see here. So then after you, let's recap where we're at and then we'll move on. Okay. So the, the first thing was that you look, that you set an intention for what you want to eat this week. What do you want it to look like? Like how many times are you eating at home? How many times are you going out to eat? What's the schedule like this week? Right? So you're setting that intention for yourself, taking a look at that. And then the second thing is you're looking at what you do have. Then the third thing is you're going to make a food plan based on what you do have and what's happening this week and your intention, right? And it's helpful if you think about how much you want to spend on food this week too, to keep that in mind. And then the fourth thing was you create a list based on what you already don't need based on what you already have and what you actually need, right? Since you've already looked at this and have an electronic list that you can keep going back to. And then the fifth thing is you go shopping and you only get what is on the list. Or you can have one of those services where, you know, you already get your groceries online and then you just go pick it up, but you're just more intentional about it because you're doing this process. All right. Um, another bonus tip when it comes to food I want to give is that you should time block and have set days that you go grocery shopping. If you can be intentional in that way, have a set day that you go grocery shopping, have a set day that you plan for the week, that you do this work, that you do the meal planning. 
So often for me, I do this on Mondays. I usually don't do it on the weekend because we're usually gone. But sometimes I get groceries on sun- Sunday and I'll do it then. I'm just flexible with those two days, like Sunday or Monday. And that really just depends on what's happening, right? But I always call Monday Meal Monday because that's when I'm going to like, you know, take things out and like food prep and then, you know, get ready for the meals for the week. And I have a set time that I'm food prepping because, you know, if you if you made food, which you have before, that it takes time to prep for these meals. And sometimes it can help if you cut this stuff up in advance, like the vegetables and all of that. Um, another little bonus tip is that I often think about like leftovers. I am someone that eats leftovers. I know some people don't. My husband and I absolutely love leftovers. Um, so I'm always thinking about like when I set up my, my calendar, I'm, I'm thinking about too, like if I make this meal, could this be made bigger so that it could also be used for lunch the next day? Um, Cause I pack his lunch too. So that's another thing I'm considering. Um, Maybe pick a date night or a night that you always go out to eat, like a set night that you go. Um, And then when you go, look, if you want to be super intentional with your money, maybe you want to spend less when you go out, take a look at reviews, obviously, and see what places have less dollar signs. Really good reviews, like five-star reviews are close to it, but low dollar signs. That could be best use for your money because it shows that a lot of other people like it there and you don't have to spend a ton of money. And in some cases, you can actually save money by going out to eat um, because whatever you were going to make was going to cost more with all of the different things. Like, for example, sometimes I found that when if I make certain salads at home, I have to get so much different items that it ends up costing my time and just costing more when I could just go out and buy the salad that's already, you know, from this quick salad place. So think about that kind of stuff too. Um, the next thing I want to say is just be gracious to yourself. Like you you might switch those dates up like we talked about because you're intentional and you're unattached. Um, and you also want to just enjoy your life. But I think you're going to enjoy your life more if you set an intention. You don't have to be like, I have to stick to this no matter what. Like don't do that to yourself. But you're probably going to spend a lot less than you've been spending when you do this. And you're going to feel better about yourself, like you're being an intentional person because that's who you want to be. All right. Um, another bonus is to make a list of the meals that you ate so you can create your own menu for yourself so that it doesn't take as much energy for you when you're thinking about in the future, like the next week, like, oh, what do we want to eat this week? I don't know. Like, look back and see what all the meals that you've made. You probably have a whole list of them. Ian has been begging me to just create a menu. Like, I think I'm going to do this for him for Christmas is like actually make a cool menu. And then he can I can say, hey, you know, what do you want to eat this week? And I can show him the menu. He can be like this, this, this. And because he's always like, I don't know, you make so, so many good things, but I can't think of them. I wish there was a menu that I could just point them out and tell you, because a lot of times I'll be annoyed with him because I'll be like, just tell me what you want. Come on. Right. But he's like, I don't know. I can't remember. But the menu helps so much and you can just have fun with it, too. And get creative. I think that would be cool. That's something that I'm working on is like my whole list of meals we've had and that we've enjoyed. And then you can try things out. You can be like, this is going to stay on the menu and this is going to leave the menu. So think about that. All right. So those are all of the tips that can help you be more intentional with how you spend your money on food. I hope you found that helpful. And now we're going to move on to shopping for items. You know, so a lot of us shop on Amazon. Um, so you can get really carried away with Amazon. I've noticed when I've been looking at my account and I'm like, what did I even buy from Amazon? Like, is this fraud? Like I see all these different charges, but a lot of times for me, it's like, like different, um, healthy food things or books or stuff like that. And it just like starts to add up. So my first tip is that you shop only for items that align with who you want to be. I say this all the time, living in alignment with who you want to be, right? So here's an example. After you've gotten clear of your vision of who you want to be, because you're going to do that no matter what, you can sign up, remember, to do that, um, you then can be more intentional with what you're shopping for. So an example is if you tell me, and I want to be really, I want to be a healthy person, a healthy, active person. 
I'm not right now. I don't really do much exercise, but I want to do more of it and I want to be more healthy in, in my body. I want to feel good in my clothes. I want to feel confident. I'm like, okay, cool. So if you want to be that person, then how are you going to spend your money? How would a healthy, active person spend their money? They would probably have certain supplements maybe that they take, maybe a set of certain vitamins they they take or certain powders. You often see people like get crazy about what they're taking and, you know, all of that like me. Like I have certain greens, I drink a certain kind of coffee, that kind of thing. Um, they take in what? Healthy food. So you know you're going to be spending money on healthy food. A lot of them have cute workout clothes. If you watch them on YouTube, you're like, oh, that's outfit's cute. Maybe then you're like, well, I'm going to get myself a cute workout outfit because I want to just feel more inspired when I'm working out. Because I know for me, when I look cuter when I'm working out, I don't know, it just feels good. I don't, does anyone else relate to that? Like, would you have like cute yoga pants on and stuff, right? So that's being intentional, though. I mean, it wouldn't be intentional if you went out and bought, like, spent all your money on a ton of new stuff, clothes, right? But if you're like, yeah, I want to be this healthy fit person, it would be in alignment if I bought this outfit because I like that outfit. It makes me feel good when I look at it or these really good shoes. I just spent a bunch of money on some really good running shoes for myself. And I don't, like, get... I used to be someone that was so cheap that I'd be like, oh, really? You have to spend that much money on shoes? Like, what the heck, you know? But now I'm like, no. I mean, this is in alignment with who I want to be. Like, I want to be this healthy, fit person, and I need good shoes. Or I want to be this kind of runner. I need good running shoes, right? So that's you spending your money very intentionally on that. Another example, I want to be an avid reader. Like, this year, one of my goals was I am an avid reader, What's in alignment with that? On my Christmas list, I asked for a Kindle, the waterproof Kindle. I asked for that. So think about this. If you're going to give off a Christmas list, start asking for things that are in alignment with who you want to be. When I wanted to be a podcaster, what did I ask for? I asked for the podcasting equipment. That's how. And then what did I go buy? I bought some additional things related to being a podcaster. I bought the certain couch that I'm sitting on right now because I knew that I could sit on it and do my podcast. Right. That's how I spent my money very intentionally. When I said I, I want to be an international hiker, what did I do? I started researching on how I could be that, how I could hike the Camino. What would I need for the Camino? And I was intentional about what I was buying because it related to me being the hiker that I wanted to be, the kind of hiker that I wanted to be. I needed lighter items. I was going to be traveling with the stuff and carrying it. I need to consider that. So here's an example. Um, of not being intentional, right? It's just buying anything that you see is cute, that's on sale. Oh, this is on sale. Like my husband is a sucker for sales all the time. And he's always like, oh, well, this is like on sale. It's a good deal. I'm like, so? Like, we don't even need that. It's not even in line with who we want to be. I don't care, right? But a lot of us fall for that. We go shopping, we see like the sale aisle, immediately go there. But like, do you have anything that you need to actually get there? Like, think about this used to be me though, for real. I don't do this anymore. I don't even like going to the grocery or shopping anymore definitely don't like going to the grocery store um, because I feel like it takes forever, especially because I go to Aldi's a lot and then I have to bag everything and it's like this whole process. But there's some really good stuff at Aldi's. Man, um, I've been learning that. Like, anyways, that's a side note. Okay, another example, <laughs> going back on track. Like, for example, I like magnets, like on the fridge, like cute magnets. And I always think about like, oh, I want to get this magnet. Like when we're traveling, like, oh, it's cute. I did, I did just buy a cute cat one that was made by a local artist in Portugal um, just because it was really, it was cute. But I felt like it was in alignment with who I wanted to be because one, I am a cat person and two, um, or an animal person in general. Um, but two, I needed another magnet because there was something I wanted to hang up and I didn't have anything. So I was like very intentional about the one I bought. Okay. This is why I'm justifying this. And you're like, yeah, it's a magnet. Come on now. But the thing with me is like I consider myself to be very much a minimalist in a lot of ways. Or I like to say an intentionalist. Um, and I can't I don't want a bunch of stuff cluttering my fridge and all of that. Right. I don't want a ton of shoes because it's not in alignment with who I want to be. The minimalist or the intentionalist, the one who has specific shoes that align with who I want to be. Right. OK, so it always goes back to that. And then the second thing is don't react on your desires immediately. Like right away, you'll be like like you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I want this. I want this. And some of us will immediately start shopping for it like on Amazon or online. 
Don't react immediately on those desires. Think about it. Um, I like to also just write, have a whole list of things I want in my phone. When I think about it, I just get it out of my mind when it comes up. So I'll just write it down in my phone, like things I want. And it'll be like great things to give other people for a list if they want to give me a gift so that I don't have to be the one complaining that I got all this crap that I didn't want. Now I have to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Now I'm really intentional about that. Like this year for Christmas, I'm really excited because um, – I know things I really want and I feel like then the other person can feel good about giving me a gift because I'm like, here's some things you can choose from that I really want. Before I used to be the person that complained that people got me stuff and I was like, Dang, I didn't want you to spend your money and now I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this and now I'm more intentional about it. Okay, so don't react immediately. Put this on a sticky note, um, on a, a other list in your phone. Um, and then... What would I say? Oh, this is good too, is that if you want to get something for yourself, rate your desire for it as far as like if it's a nine or higher, like one out of 10. So nine means I really, really want this thing. One means I don't. So let's say it's a nine or higher. Then then give yourself permission either if you decide I want to get this thing because I really want it. It's a nine or higher. And I feel like, you know, I really need this because I need a really new good co- coat or something like that might be an example, right? Or you can start budgeting for it. You're like, I am going to get this thing because I've rated it as a nine or higher, but now I'm going to set a plan to start budgeting for it. Sometimes just rating things really helps you so you don't get suckered into the sales or something that's happening in the moment. I'll be like, how much do I want this on a scale one to to 10? Like I even tell Ian this. I'm like, oh, I kind of like this bracelet. And he's like, oh, you want it? Get it. He always tells me that. Get it, get it, get it. And I'm like, wait, let me think. One out of 10, mm, I'm only at like a six. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. And it helps me a lot to be intentional, okay? So then the third thing is set a specific day that you shop. So if you have a list of things, like even for me in the house, I'll have a list of like things that we need for the house and I'll write it down. Like I just wrote Drano down the other day. Um, What else did I say we needed? Like cat litter or whatever it is. So I'll start writing this list and I have the sticky note that I stick on my board thing. So anyways, that's there, right? Now I have a set day that I shop and I take that list or those notes and then I go. So I'm intentional. And then even I have a set time that I shop for Amazon stuff that I regularly buy. I put it in my calendar. It's like a set time that I'm shopping. So I'm not randomly distracted, scrolling, like scrolling through stuff and shopping. I used to do that. I used to scroll all the time at like apps that I had looking for new items and that wasn't very intentional. So set a specific day. This is so you're not reacting in the moment based on how you feel. This is you being more intentional. Okay, so I went through all of those three additional um, tips. Let me go over them again. The first one is shop only for items that align with who you want to be. First, you got to decide who you want to be. That's why you're going to take the Clarify Your Vision course, right? Yes. And then the second thing is to don't react on desires immediately. Third is set a specific day that you shop. Okay. All right. So um, those are all my tips. I hope you really enjoyed this. I want you to know that we're going to dive a little bit more into the whole concept of being intentional with our money. So you're going to hear some more episodes coming up that talk specifically about that. And I'm actually going to make it so we focus on multiple areas of our life and really dive deep into each area. We're also looking at getting some new guests on the show. A lot of people have been asking me, but since I've been gone, I haven't had the time to actually sit down and like figure out schedules. But now you're going to see people come on. You're also going to hear from some of my previous coaching clients. They're going to be coming on the show, sharing about um, how they've implemented some of the tips and things that I teach and how it's affected their life. It's so fun to hear from people and hear that, you know, we're not alone in the stuff that we go through. I love those kinds of episodes. All right. I hope you have an awesome week and I will talk to you soon. Leave a review if you haven't. All right. Bye. Bye.